Hey everybody, it's Phoenix and thank you so much for joining us for our Heather activation. This is number 24, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. And if you're new to this, if you're listening to the recording and you're new to this, I encourage you to go back to the very first uh, Heather activation that's in my YouTube channel and just listen all the way sequentially forward because it gives you an idea of who the Hathers are and how you're going to be working with them and the breadcrumbs that you're following in the last two years that lead you to your highest destiny or at least an element of your highest destiny. So um, do start there if this is all new to you, but if, you're, if you've been a dedicated follower, and I, I'm so grateful for you, if you have been, uh, you'll know that you've followed breadcrumbs and that's why you're still here because you're still following breadcrumbs and anything else that the Hathers have to share. For those of you, uh, again, new, I'll be kind of going back and forth a little bit here. The Hathers are fifth to twelfth dimensional beings here to help us reach our highest destiny. So think of them as your spiritual support team for whatever you might need. Um, they would be in addition to any angels or archangels that you might also be working with. So it's not like you can only work with them. It's just another support team. And we took, uh, we recently took a two month hiatus because, um, <laughs> because the Heather said that they were going to take a two month hiatus. So that's what we did. And it was actually perfect for me too. So that was great. But what we're doing now is we're kind of starting a new series, which I think is perfect. Having followed the breadcrumbs of what your soul has wanted you to participate in, you are now ready to be a more conscious co-creator with spirit for whatever you are choosing to co-create. And so today's topic is how to stay on top, let's see, how is it, how to stay on top of the wave when you're riding it. And um, so I want you to be thinking about the metaphor of staying on top of a wave from the standpoint of being a surfer. If you have ever watched surfers or if you've been a surfer, then it's a very conscious process. They are on their board, they're gauging the waves, they're gauging the water, they're, they're monitoring, they're watching. And when the perfect wave comes, the one that's going to be high enough to sustain them and get them up and long enough to give them a good ride, then that's when they jump on, right? And then through their balance and their intention, they're staying on and they're riding that wave. Well, that's what conscious co-creation is kind of like. <laughs> And what I mean by conscious co-creation is where you are choosing your outcome and you're working with your spirit helpers and waiting for that divine moment, that perfect wave to appear in its divine timing so that you can jump on and take it as far as you can go with it, right? Now, a conscious co-creation could be something like moving across country. <laughs> or buying a new house, or getting a new piece of furniture, or having a new relationship, or a new job, or, you know, anything that is something that you are working towards that will lead you on that path to your highest destiny. Now you might say to yourself, well, how is getting a new house re helping to reach my highest destiny? Well, it all depends, right? It all depends on where you are and where you want to be. And this is what we mean by conscious. It's about being aware of what's working for you and what would work better for you. For instance, when we were uh, a year ago, when we were moving from Sedona to Maine, we were very guided to move to Maine, but it was very in alignment for us. And we knew that that's where we wanted to be. We also knew that we were very complete with the energy of Sedona, that it was no longer supporting us in terms of um, whatever our next project of our sole purpose and our, our highest destiny was going to be. That we had come as far as we could. We had run with the energies in Sedona as long as we needed to. But now we needed a different kind of energy to support our next project. And we were pretty sure that Maine was going to be offering that. What we were needing is being on land that was like self-sustaining, 
right? And and also secluded and private, and yet not so like isolated, right? That we just couldn't couldn't talk to any neighbors at all. So we knew what we were needing, and that's the conscious part. When you know that you're finished with one creation and you're ready for the next, because that's going to serve you on your path to your highest destiny, that's what we mean by conscious co-creation. So, um, so when you're riding that wave, it's, it's really important in the conscious co-creation part to know where do you want to end up this or something better, right? So maybe you want a, a bigger house. Maybe you want a smaller house. Maybe you don't want a house. Maybe you want to live under a rock. It doesn't matter what you are manifesting. It's just why do you want to get there? How's it going to get you there? And how's it going to support you on your path to your highest destiny? And to do this consciously so that we are working with our spirit helpers to make it happen, right? And when that divine moment comes, we jump on it because we got to do our part too. It's not just about spirit bringing everything to us. We have to be able to say yes, and we have to be able to take action and we have to take that step or it won't happen, right? So I want you to be thinking about what is it that you would love to create in your life at this time? And it doesn't have to be big, like a job or a home or a relationship or brand new health. It could be small. It could be like creating an office within your home, if that works for you. Or maybe you'd really like to have a kayak. Or maybe you'd really like a new bike. Or maybe it's nothing material at all. Maybe you just want a better relationship with yourself. Maybe you'd like a better relationship with spirit. It, it doesn't matter what it is. And it doesn't matter how big or small it is. It just matters that it, it's what your heart desires more than anything. And once you know what you're working towards, then it's a whole lot easier to say, all right, Having followed the breadcrumbs before, I can follow some breadcrumbs now, but I can also be an active participant and choose consciously how I'm going to get there. So there's going to be some, some teachings throughout this next series of ways to help you be a more or a more effective conscious co-creator. But for today, it's really about what is the wave that you want to ride? <laughs> And then being open as you're sitting with your Heather helpers, because they're either going to help help you refine your wave or your co-creation so that it's more in alignment with your highest destiny, or they'll help you to have a better understanding if there's something even better that we just haven't even thought of yet, or they will be offering some healing because Likely, when we are starting something new, especially something that's really near and dear to our heart, our fear is going to come up. You know, the fear of, oh, maybe I won't be able to do this. You know, what if, what if I can't get it? What if I, what if I fail? You know, the, those old fears that we all have, we all carry with us. And they always come up when we do something new. So regardless of what you're going to be receiving, and maybe it's all three of those things, but the Heathers are here to help you and to support you on your path to your highest destiny. And now you're doing it more consciously than ever before. The bigger picture of conscious co-creation is that it helps us to live more consciously. Because when we live more consciously, we are more concerned about how are we living and not how are we dying. We don't get so caught up in our fears. We don't let our fears stop us, right? When we're living consciously. And conscious evolution is the path to ascension or enlightenment, as some people would call it. So you can see how this all fits into reaching our highest destiny. So it's kind of a an exciting time that we're on this series right now because I think the world needs a whole lot more of our conscious co-creations than maybe ever before. 
and we must be ready or we wouldn't be receiving this information. So I want to thank you, first of all, those of you that have followed so dedicatedly for so long. Thank you so much for that. And I know that you're getting a lot out of it or you wouldn't keep following. And I want to thank you for those of you that are brand new to this, who are finding this on YouTube and, and listening to the recordings because maybe the time doesn't work for you to be here. Thank you so much for, for taking that step forward to reach your highest destiny. The more we can do that, the more people we have doing that, the better the world is. And we're part of that. So that has to be part of our highest destiny as well. Okay, so in just a few minutes, I'm going to start leading us in a guided meditation that will help you start from a place of love because that's where everything is created from. Everything, including us. We are all created from a place of love. And all of our creations, when they are created in that love, they tend to be more in alignment with our highest destiny. And then from that place of love, you'll be connecting with your Heather helpers, no matter how many there are for you today, and possibly some other angels and helpers too, if, if you would like to invite them in. And help. they will be helping you with either directing your conscious co-creation to something that's more in alignment for you, helping to refine it, or helping you with healing so that it's not a scary place. It's an exciting place to be. And this is just the beginning. The whole series is going to be about more and better conscious co-creation, helping you on your path to ascension and enlightenment. All right, so if you haven't already turned off your video, I encourage you to do that because I talk with my hands and I don't think there's any point in having any distraction. And we certainly don't need distraction from anybody, right? Sometimes it's really tempting to just peek. <laughs> All right, so let's just get comfortable wherever you are. And just allow your breathing to become slow and rhythmic at a rate that works for you. And even if you have to kind of slow it down just a little bit, that's okay. Because that slower rate, as it slows your breath, it also slows your blood flow. It slows your neurological flow which signals your body for transformation and change and helps you to open your heart. At this point, I invite you to remember experiences you might have had with unconditional love, maybe with people, if you've been lucky enough to experience that with people, or with animals or in nature, any place where you just felt so deeply connected to all that is. And when you have those remembrances, it just begins opening your heart and more and more love starts flowing through into your heart. Now, if you're having a particularly hard day and it's just too rough to think about any of those possible experiences, maybe just saying the words unconditional love or love and gratitude over and over again or namaste or whatever phrase will help you to just kind of relax into that space a little better. And when your heart begins opening to that love, it's flowing in and flowing in and flowing into your heart. And then it just spills over into your entire body so that your whole body is being touched with love. That means every cell in your body is receiving love right now. And you might notice it in certain places maybe through twinges or tingling or warmth. 
or some other sense or color or sound. And it's okay if you don't feel anything at all. Knowing that it's happening is enough. Good. And when your entire body is filled with love, then that love just keeps flowing in and now it's moving into your energy field. So it begins with a layer closest to your physical body, which is your physical layer, the memory of your physical experiences, but they're all being touched with love, which creates a healing. And then that spills over into your emotional layer, which is the memory of all emotions. And they're all being touched with love. And then that love spills over into the mental layer, the memory of all your belief systems, all of which are being touched with love. And finally, the last layer that we're working with for our purposes is your spiritual layer, which is the memory of all experiences, all past lives, all ancestors' lives. And all of that is being touched with love. So now you are just a huge ball of love. And this is the perfect place to co-create from, you and spirit. So I invite you to be thinking about what it is you'd like to co-create. And just hold it in this ball of love. As you turn to meet your Hather helpers and they are emitting a lot of love towards you right now, which helps you to recognize them, whether you're feeling that love or sensing it in some way, maybe you're seeing the colors of it, hearing the tones or the frequencies of it. Noticing how it appears for you. This just helps you to recognize them and to be complete with that. This is good. If you'd like, you can send some love back. They appreciate that. It completes the transmission that was started. Allow yourself to see, sense, feel, know their presence and their desire to help you reach your highest destiny through the co-creation process. Right now, they're going to assist you with that, whether you need refining or ideas, higher ideas or healing, whatever it is that you need, they're here to help you. So just allow for that and I'll be really quiet while they're connecting with you.
just allowing them to guide you where you need to go for your highest co-creation. And you'll know when it's almost complete for now, because you'll start to feel the energy kind of shift slowly. Maybe it's not as warm or as intense, or maybe you feel more relaxed and you're more in a twilight zone. It doesn't mean that it's all over for now. It just means that the initial contribution has been made. And it's very possible more will continue later. Maybe in your sleep. Or maybe over the next few days. So allow yourself time to begin integrating what you did receive to the best of your ability. And sometimes there aren't any words and that's okay. Allow for the feelings to come up and nurture those feelings or remembrances or ideas. And just be with that for a few minutes.
slowly allow yourself to very gently disengage when you're ready. Coming back into your room and into your body. And if you'd like to stay connected with the Hathers and continue what you're doing, you might want to leave the meeting at this time. And that's fine. Because you'll be uninterrupted then. But if you'd like to stay on and maybe share or listen to others sharing, you can do that as well. Many times it's through the sharing that we get greater insights or remembrances. And many times it helps others. So if you'd like to share, you can just unmute yourself at this time. So thank you everyone for attending today and thank you for those of you watching the replay. I look forward to next month as we continue on our path to our highest destiny by using conscious co-creation. Namaste everyone.